Hey, 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 this is Matthew Harvey here with the 12 O'Clock Siren, recording live at the 903 Broadband Studios at the Cowboy Corner on the southeast side of the downtown Leonard Square. On my virtual left hand is James. I might go back to Twitter, Hartley. Man, I never left Twitter. Oh, you didn't? No, man. I don't post much on there, but it is a uh, for cultural um, observation. It is a must-have. I dumped it, man. Well, I don't blame you. I don't yeah, blame you for I, I got rid of it. Uh, I like the I like the news that's been coming out lately. Yep, interesting stuff, man. Good for uh, the free freedom of speech. Supposedly, I'm an absolute. I almost went with James. Ab, freedom of speech absolutist, Hartley. <laughs> that's right. That's a good one. That's, I that's the new that term, one. isn't it? It is. It it's is. What, the, what they're saying these days. Well, hey, man. Welcome from uh, where? Where are you at? McAllen, Texas. Right there now. There you are. Welcome from down there. We've got a big show today. I'd like to introduce Miss Sabrina Hull and Jeannie Rosenberger of Mission 3105. Hey, folks. How are y'all? Those are real people. <laughs> Those are real people. Hey. Hey. Howdy, the howdy. Gallery adores you. Welcome to Leonard, ladies. Jeannie, welcome back. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Sabrina is the founder of Mission 3105. And we would like to get into that. If you don't know, we're recording on May 1st, which is the first day of what you are about to tell us about. Yep. So tell us what 3105 is and uh, the backstory and everything. So um, I was married for many, many years to a great guy, uh, Officer Garrett Hall. He was killed um, in the line of duty. He was murdered on uh, September 14th of 2018. And um, in an effort to sort of heal and to thank all the people out there that were so kind to me that I, I didn't know they were faceless, but they did so many acts of kindness. Um, I wanted to give back and come up with a way to bring a little bit of good in this world uh, when my days were so very dark. And um, Mission 3105 was born. Basically, uh, Garrett's badge number was 3105 meant a great deal to him, that badge number. Um, and then uh, the idea of doing 31 acts of kindness in his honor in the month of May, being the fifth month of the year, I could tie that together. And um, so really, Mission 3105 is all year round, but in May, it's really something where I'm, it's more intentional, mm. you know? Be aware of what you're yeah, doing. be aware and help bring awareness to others so that when they see other people doing these acts of kindness and sharing it on social media. And that's really all it is, is, is sharing acts of kindness so that other people pay attention. And, you know, maybe they'll hold open the door. Maybe they'll compliment. Maybe they'll tip a little extra, whatever it is. Maybe when somebody asks for that donation, they won't say no right away because they'll remember like, oh, yeah, I remember my neighbor or so-and-so had posted about this. And what a great way to honor Garrett, but also what a great way to just – do something good in this world. We mm. have enough of the other stuff. So yep. So you encourage people to uh, share it online? I do. That's the whole point. Gotcha. Um, what we a lot of people are modest and, and maybe might not want to do that, so I'm sure you understand that. But I totally get please that. Please do it. Yeah, that's one of the things that we had talked about is, like, it is awkward because, you know, it, you don't want to brag if you do something nice. You don't want everybody – you're doing it out of a place of kindness, not out of a place of ego. Um, however – the only way to make other people aware and make it stick is by sharing that. So that's really what we, we ask that you, um, if you do an act of kindness, maybe take a picture or tell the story of why you did it, what inspired you, and then just use the hashtag Mission3105, um, and that way we can find it, or we ask that you send it, you know, th we have a page on social use media. Use the little A symbol and, yeah. and type in Mission3105. Yeah. Yep. That's I bet that worked too. Yeah, any of that. Um, I have people message me through Messenger and or you know send messages or even I have it where you could post on the page. So mm -hmm. if you have something to share, yeah. So that's really it, it is awkward though to do something and then tell like about yourself. But if we we certainly share enough of the bad on social media and the ugly yeah. like we do, and so what a what a way to sort of bring light to a better thing. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Um, the I, I said mention with the at sign. It never works for me. <laughs> like when you go to your mentions, it never it, it never right. works right. Uh, on the Facebook, especially, I can't figure it out. Mostly Facebook, like it, it's so awful. 
I think their business pages just don't want you to see I was say, things. Yeah, exactly. And, and a lot it of works times, on certain pages. <laughs> and a lot of times, like people that like a photo, you can invite them to like it. Sometimes that glitches so bad. Maybe it's just my phone, but it's almost like Facebook doesn't want you to do anything. That's Sidebars. So that, that's okay. my irritation <laughs> with them. Um, so take us back, and uh, if you don't mind, uh, tell us Garrett's story um, from maybe you know police okay. academy to yeah. Y- you yeah. know yeah actually um this past like? month april would have been 23 years since he graduated the police academy okay um breaks my heart that he did not get to be there for that but um uh he was an amazing well respected officer he was a great husband father and friend and son um genie she could tell you Jeannie was really close. Jeannie's <laughs> she cheesing really big crazy. right now. She's smiling. Yeah. she. Uh, the first time she ever met Garrett, she was scared to death. Terrified. Of him. Like, terrified. Like, that he was going to arrest her for no reason. Just walking <laughs> in the salon. He might have like, a probable cause. Yeah, I mean, let's that's be that honest. guilty <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But a- they ended up becoming thick as thieves together. But, um, but anyway, uh, <laughs> and she liked to drive him crazy. But, um, yeah, so we... we were married for a long, long time and had a, a great a great life. We were actually really coming up into that sweet spot in our lives where he was getting closer to retirement. We had moved into our dream home um, and we're really enjoying it. And he was on a specialized unit. Um, he was an officer for... 19- Fort Worth PD? Yes, Fort okay. Worth PD, officer for um, 19 years. And the majority of his years... Um, he was actually out of a uniform and in undercover stuff. So uh, he did some pretty intense things in all those years. And, you know, and so on September 13th, which just happened to be our daughter's birthday, mm. <laughs> just hard. Um, I kissed him goodbye. And our daughter was overseas going to college. Our oldest daughter um, was overseas going to college. So we had FaceTimed her during that evening to once again tell her happy birthday one more time. And um, then it was, uh, you know, I'll see you in the morning. And there was a... Night shift then? Well, th- he, because he was on a specialized unit, they had certain jobs that they would, you know, like these guys were a crime spree, these three. Um, it was a crime spree that went on for months. I think they... Uh, and, and I don't want to screw up details, and we've got the trial coming up um, for one of the bad guys, but um, they w- had been uh, robbing and beating and... Um, doing some horrible things all along Fort Worth, just really terrorizing the citizens of Fort Worth for a few months. And um, Garrett's team was in charge of finding out who they were and tracking them down and and putting them behind bars. Mm -hmm. And um, so when we spoke that night, um, and they were obviously targeting these places at night, so his team was working at night. They would work whenever they needed to. So they were working that night um, trying to stop these guys. And uh, so my last words were, you know, I love you. And he's like, I think... Tonight's the night we put this to an end. I'm, I'm done with these guys. Like, we're, we're going to put this to an end. And um, next thing you know, um, I had a knock at my door. I had taken some sleeping pills because I knew I wanted to get up early and take this yoga class I was really into. Um, so I had taken a sleeping pill because I have insomnia. And, of course, he wasn't home, so that always throws mm-hmm. a wife off anyway. You mm-hmm. don't sleep well when your husband's not home. And um, so I, I remember thinking, like, am I really hearing something at the door? And... It was our neighbor who just happened to be a Fort Worth police officer, too, and had been on a team with Garrett prior to this and um, good friends. And he and his wife were at the door. And I'll never forget that, you know, he's like, it's me. And like, I wouldn't open the door. And then I heard his wife say, Sabrina, it's it's us. Please open the door. And they came in and they were like, hey, you know, something's happened. You need to come with us to the hospital. And I was like, is he okay?" And they're like, we don't know very much. You just need to come with us. And um, I remember saying, well, give me a minute. I need to go pray. And in my head, it never hit me for one second that Garrett was, like, hurt. I thought car accident, you know, like, I, I, it's More nighttime. Routine. Yeah. It, it never really, even on the ride there to the hospital, which we were about 45 minutes from the hospital where we lived, um, and he's in a patrol unit, so we had, like, lights going, trying to get me to the hospital and stuff. It never crossed my mind that that's what I'd be walking into. And I got there, and um, uh, there was what felt like hundreds of police officers all through the hospital. And um, 
that's when I started realizing, like, this is, this isn't like he had a little car accident or he got shot in the hand and I'm going to have to hear him complain about how weak his hand is now for months until he rehabs it. Like, I was, I already was playing all these conversations in my head of, like, you know, how am I going to get him, like, over being mad that mm-hmm. something bad happened to him? Um, and the doctor told me that he had been shot in the head and they didn't, it didn't look good. But I never, it never crossed my mind until that moment that it, I, I never, Garrett was bulletproof in my eyes. So yeah. yeah, it was awful. He, he ended up passing, um, on the next day, September 14th. And, um, and we stayed at the hospital for about five days. It's kind of that part to blur. Cause he, <coughs> um, he was an organ donor. And so they harvested, I mean, he gave everything, skin, tissue, eyes, every everything he could so it takes them you know quite a few days to find recipients that he would match or fit and things like that and actually his um his heart ended up being too big which just screams well, everything about who he was so yeah that's neat yeah uh do you know where that goes like, um I don't know if that's I a, have a um, I have received some information on somebody who received uh, one of his kidneys and part of his liver because um, you know they can regenerate a liver if they start with a piece and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So um, I did receive some information on that and some they, they you know the recipients can keep that private and I totally honor sure. that too. But I know he, I know he's out there all parts of him. Um, I think the hardest part of that, like, I'm, I think organ donation is, is what we should all think about. Like, we don't need them where we're going. So, but the hardest part of that is that Garrett never got to come home from work that night. And um, then he worked for five more days straight, staying, keeping his body alive for others. And he just kept giving to the very end. And that, that just, again, really inspires me with the mission too because it could be so easy to quit it really could yeah. and he didn't so how can i you know good way to look at it yeah um we, go ahead we james talking, yeah sorry um we were talking uh, right before we, we we pressed play here that uh you know you had received a lot of kindness and, and things uh directly following your husband's death can you what did what did that look like you said he stayed alive for five uh, mm-hmm. days after what did it what did the immediate aftermath look like well i, I want to be sensitive i know this yeah is absolutely no um i did i received a lot of kindness and um uh you know i was never alone at the hospital i genie can tell you and i don't not to not to bring up more pain but um those that don't know out in the world that genie has my, been my best friend for years and years we are family but while genie was at the hospital with me her mom was passing. So we went through this together, which is why a big part of also why Jeannie's here, because we've done this all together. We Mm. have grieved some big moments together. But, um, but, you know, not only were people constantly there standing vigil, um, loving on my children, loving on my friends and our family, Garrett's parents, like just driving them. Then afterwards, it was just all the cards and flowers and and donations and um, I don't know tunnel uh, tunnel to tunnel towers. towers. Um, they paid off our mortgage. Mm. I mean, because Garrett was the breadwinner in our home, and I mean, I I, I was we were working towards retirement. Um, our one was off in college, the other was um, in high school, two years away from graduating. So that was our plan. Like we were working towards that. So I had cut back on work and was working towards other things that we could do together when he was no longer in law enforcement. So, you know, them taking care of us and my family the way they did, just, there was just so many amazing things. And I I was telling Jeannie today on the way up here, like, um, I remember the funeral, obviously, is, uh, police funerals are are pretty big and there's a lot of um, ceremonial things and stuff, but I just remember all these people in the community, strangers strangers lining the street lining the street and this one gentleman just standing there by himself with this homemade poster saying, we love you, we back the blue. And like, you know, we need more of that in this world. 
So, um, yeah, it's, when you get letters from people all over the country and phone calls and, you know, granted, a lot of it didn't get to me because I was sort of in a fog. I still was in disbelief for a really long time that this – Garrett was Superman to me. He was a huge man, bustles from head to toe. Like, you just did not see this happening. Um, so it took me a little sure. bit. But what did penetrate that fog was just so many – kind words to letters food you know people offering to hang christmas lights for me at christmas mow my lawn all the things that they realized i i had no idea like how do you even do she's got to do it took yeah. it i mean garrett took care of all of it yeah i didn't even know any of it. i never even pumped my gas when we were married like he i he would take my gas take my car go get gas while i was still sleeping park it back in the driveway with a note like you're you're good have a good day love you you know so like my whole world was rocked, and the community just rallied around me. They really did. That's good to hear. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. I mean, Fort Worth PD is definitely, like, they're not just officers together. Like They're family. It's family. Yeah, it is. They are. And they and they ex- took us all in. Like, they protected my – heck, Jordan, um, my oldest, moved back from England where she was going to school at Oxford. She moved back to the States after Garrett's death eventually um, – she's one brave you say dude. oxford yeah she was in england at oxford yeah she's she's smart been there too. my cousin went to oxford oh as well. well then you have a smart yeah. cousin yeah. yeah it's pretty cool we got to go Jeannie and i went yeah jared had bought me a trip as a anniversary present before he died so we ended up still going and taking it and mm. Jeannie and our other best friend mitzi went with us but anyway when jordan came back it was the police officers that moved her into her new dorm you know on their time off they're loading cool. up i mean the things they have done for us, they never forget. Did I see them at uh, with her at her graduation college? Yep. Right. Yeah. They asked she graduated from TCU in Fort Worth, and I don't know who was more proud, me or the city of Fort Worth, honestly. Like, the fact that she overcame all that, still graduated on time, now going to get her master's. I mean, that's pretty brave, righteous yeah. behavior. But we, um, we all called Garrett a warrior when he was alive, and then especially after he was dead. So I would like to say that. She was trained by a warrior to be a warrior, and both my girls showed up. They mm. did. They really did. Yeah, because they were there. Like, for Tristan, she graduated high school, same. Yeah, they, I mean, we had a bunch of Jeeps and flags and everything, signs and everything. When she, Because, of course, she graduated through COVID, so there wasn't normal where they could go to the graduation. So they lined the streets of our area and wow. of her school and had, like, a parade for her. Wow. It's like, who does that? But they did. They did. And they don't have to. They could forget, but they don't. They remember. And they're incredible. Really incredible. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So. Mm. Um, since he was in the uh, police academy, can I assume he wasn't military? No, he was not military. It's one of his biggest regrets, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's always said that he. James might say that. that <laughs> <laughs> so well, different. Yeah. Uh, speaking from the valley. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, what, what were the circumstances of that night? Um, um, and I don't know how much I can go into. Before you say that, I don't want to say anything that might jeopardize a trial or anything. Yeah, I I really don't know too, I mean, obviously what they did was well documented. So, I mean, it's a Google search. Just did the high points if if you don't know. They were, um, they were targeting, um, mainly Hispanic nightclubs, bars and things Mm. like that. Um, in the city of Fort Worth, um, they were hitting it for cash and stuff. They'd go in, guns and hold um, up the place. Yeah, hold up the place, beat them, steal, mm. pistol whip them, whatever it took. And um, that particular night, they hit a bar that that Garrett's team and and the police were tracking them, and and they hit it. And as they were coming out, they they were doing whatever it is they do and I, I like I said I, I, I wasn't there so I don't know but um, I know that one of the guys uh, opened fire as the police were trying to take him down and got into a gunfight with Garrett and um, resulted in both of their deaths mm. but yeah I guess he had decided he wasn't going back to prison but and all three have been in and out of prison so does that yeah. mean he killed himself nope he was killed by um Garrett and two other officers. Okay. Yeah. Um, who, who's on trial out of the three? Um, I'm, I'm not going to say 
his name and he is a male but he identifies as a female from what i understand but um but w- it is my understanding and this is my opinion that this is one of the most heinous people i could ever have met just based on things i've heard and yeah. read and stuff like that after garrett's death but um yeah the, it's he, like I said, he identifies as a female, and I think that's a big part of um, his defense, maybe, mm-hmm. um, is those kind of things, his confusion, gender confusion or something. But um, the bottom line, he's been a criminal. He's got a criminal record from that spans many, many, many years violent, violent crimes. So wow. this was his typical M.O., and... Um, needs to never be out on the streets again. <laughs> what is his charge? Um, it is a murder charge. Um, they, The state feels like um, had these guys not been doing what they were doing, Garrett would still be alive today, and I wholeheartedly agree with that. Mm-hmm. Um, they all had guns. They all knew that eventually somebody was going to get killed. They, they knew that. And they were committing crimes that were... Uh, because nobody, none of the other victims died doesn't mean they didn't come close to it. So, And more of that will come out, I'm sure, as we get to trial. But, um, but they were very, very violent offenders, all three of them. And um, that's Garrett would be alive if it wasn't for that. So they need to pay for Garrett's death just as much. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I believe you, you may have mentioned this uh, well, after record. Um, was that the sting night or like were they mm-hmm. actively trying to arrest mm-hmm. them that night yeah or? they had been tra- okay. trying to track them down from what i understand and again i only know what garrett told me yeah um as a wife you know hey there's these bad guys they're doing really bad things and we've got to stop them they are terrorizing and um i i don't want to say the number wrong because it could be more but i i want to say there was like at least 17 different um nights or 17 different places Jeez, occasions. or people yeah occasions incidents i guess yes I, yeah where they had done this in, in in a short period of time um and it was just difficult to figure out who it was in the up. beginning yeah because you know where they were targeting uh, they, they were there was a um you know, not surveillance cameras and things like that. You know, they, they knew they were targeting specific places for a specific reason. So, mm-hmm. yeah, they're they're pretty pretty hateful. And they and they they did a lot of things to um, cover their track. So it took some really good police work to figure out who they were. And obviously, um, especially with the trial coming up, I mean, they've got on mask and he's. He's dressed like a woman but looks like a man physically, so it can be confusing. Like, who are we looking for kind of thing. So, you know, I'm sure it, it was a Raising challenge. Raising doubt, I guess, yeah, was probably I'm the... Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure it was a real challenge it. for um, the department, but they have really good police officers out there who are really Probably pretty committed. Yes, very committed. I mean, they were hurting a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people. And, and, and with such ruthlessness so that's really you know why i i really this month more than ever this year um the mission is so much more important to me because i could really focus on that like even just talking about it now i'm like gosh like who does that who wakes up and just wants to hurt somebody but i mean that really they knew what they were doing and they yeah i mean what's the end game yeah if you're doing if you're going that much of a a crime spree and going that hardcore like what we can't understand that. We just yeah. can't. We're not built that way. So in order for me not to just concentrate on that, this mission this month of the acts of kindness and hearing other people committing acts of kindness and, and spreading good is really where I want to focus my attention because I don't want to be thinking about what's coming and I don't want to be thinking about all their dark stuff. I want to think about all the good and that was what Garrett did. And one thing that I really always loved and appreciated about Garrett is 19 years of being a police officer. And, and James, you know, with you in the military and stuff, you know, you see some nasty, nasty stuff. And it can be really hard to still have faith in humanity when you see what they see. We, as civilians, like Jeannie and I, we, we don't get it. We see it in the newspaper and it's somebody else's life. Mm. So it doesn't, you know, so yeah, we're still shocked by a lot of it. But 
Garrett still believed in good. He still saw good in people. He still got mushy over puppies and babies. Like, he was still that guy, even with all that dark that he had seen in all of his years. And um, that makes me want to still believe in good and push that, you know, really focus on that, especially this year. Cool. Yeah. Um, what are some examples or maybe stories of things that you've seen people do, done yourself? Gosh. or you know? um, So many. Like one of the coolest ones that started the first year was people would um, – uh, do thirty-one dollars and five cents in gratuity to mm. servers, and they'd write on the check, you know, in honor of, you know, it's probably appreciated a lot. Yeah, I mean, geez, especially these last few years. I mean, people in the service industry have really taken yep. a hit yep. um, with everything being closed down and stuff. So that was a huge one. Um, recently, today, um, I received a message that somebody made an anonymous donation to a community. Um, it page where it's basically um, if you need or want something as a social media page that you can post on it and maybe your neighbor could help you out you know give it to you and somebody made a big don anonymous donation um, in Garrett's name uh, AJ and Jeannie and I went and delivered to um, the animal shelter together we delivered some food and, you know just whatever cool. sometimes it's just a silly thing is like giving somebody a compliment or instead of getting ticked off at somebody, giving them a little bit more grace. Mm. I put shopping carts back when I see people leave them in the parking lot. And every time I do that, I'm like, oh, it would have taken you 10 steps to get it over to where it belonged. But instead. But you put it back and saved somebody a door exactly. ding. Exactly. Which like, saved them $500 <laughs> deductible. Well, it, Look it at just that. makes somebody's life easier. Makes, yeah. you know, and it, they'll never know it. They'll never know it. They don't have to. And instead of getting frustrated with them for not putting their carts, I'm like, you know, I'm just going to give them a little nod of, hey, I got you. Yeah. You're my neighbor. I'll take care of this for you. So things like that. Um, uh, what else have we seen? I was going to say, like, a lot of the times when we're at the gas station, like, AJ's like, Mom, there's, there's an officer. Let's go in and pay for his stuff so he doesn't yeah. have to. Like a fountain drink and a candy bar. Getting the kids into it. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So uh, AJ, um, he likes that side of things. Like yeah. talking to him and saying, hey, like this is for Garrett. So because Garrett was a big part of AJ's life. Yeah. yeah. He so. was. He was. One of my favorite trends as of uh, the last 10 years has been the paying behind somebody, you know, for somebody in a drive through is always mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Buy somebody's coffee. Um, yeah. drop off some cookies and pizza at the fire station or, or the police a couple station. of cases yeah. of water. Cause you know, those things, those are helpful. Donate blood, you know, give some blood, help somebody else, you know, but be intentional. That's really the whole point is being intentional because I felt, I feel like police officers and, um, first responders and obviously our military, they get up every day with the intention of protecting us and doing some good helping if they can so we as civilians we we could do a little bit more of that too their There's jobs reason. by default are for everybody <laughs> uh -huh. or to serve everybody yeah yeah, yeah so for sure what's um, we've seen so many i mean it's crazy we've seen so many cool things picking up somebody's trash can and putting it back in their driveway mm -hmm. that's that's something I, I think is great and i think it'd be, it's easy for one person to do a bunch of trash cans like in a neighborhood mm -hmm. or something did i see that on your page was you may last have year? i think somebody did do that last year where they it just doesn't take up. a lot of if, it doesn't if you're gonna go walk or, or right. work out or something yeah. you might as well do that yeah, yeah. and that's so cool because i hate bringing the trash tomorrow's back. monday <laughs> by the way guys <laughs> yeah after Garrett died that was one of like my least favorite i'm like now i gotta take out the trash myself like like, what the heck? <laughs> Where is that big guy? We uh, we live. My wife and I live, uh, you know, out in Leonard, so we're we're rural. But uh, the best thing we ever did was get an actual dumpster. So I never have to move trash cans in or out. I live in an so, HOA. The best thing I ever did is not take my trash back. <laughs> yeah. Just leave it out there. Get fined every month. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. I don't do that. We live in an HOA. I live in an HOA. I live can't in do that. Oh. They don't no. like that. No, they do not. They well, do Adam not. is a big fan of not mm -hmm. putting the trash out until the trash truck is turning down the street. But you know you can feel those vibrations from bed. 
Dude, you hear yeah. it. You're like, you, you hear When it's that trash noise. day and, and you know you slept a little late than the trash can or the trash guys get there, you can feel it. Yeah. Why did the trash guys always come early and FedEx always comes late? I don't know. It, <laughs> or the trash guys come really, really late on like the rainy day when your trash gets Stinks. nasty and everything. You're like, really? Oh, you couldn't yeah. come this morning and check that? No, I gotta touch that thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they always seem to be done by like nine o'clock. <laughs> We love our trash men, if any are listening, oh, yeah. by the way. We're, we're I, know, not I know a couple trash guys that <laughs> yeah. are probably listening right now. And Shout out, out to you guys. You. Hey, hey. B- business is always picking up. And out of acts of kindness, I do give them water. You do. Nice. When, the trash, when yeah. the trash guys roll through, I will run out there and hand them bottles of water. You just gave me my first one for tomorrow. Yeah. Well, we have a huge one coming up this week that we want to recognize. Our best friend, um, Jeannie and I's best friend, Mitzi, is donating a kidney Ooh. on Wednesday. Wow. As an act, I mean, she's donating a kidney because she's a hero and just cool like that. But like, what a freaking act of kindness! Wow. Like, and she likes to drink, so we're really, really <laughs> shocked. We're really <laughs> proud of her. We're like, your kidney's okay, right? Yeah. This is really she's happening. She's like, yeah, it's perfect. Everything's yeah. good. Should get a we're refund good. or anything, just in case. Or? We're good to go. She swears but everything's that's good. That's dedication. So, yeah, yeah, it is. So wow. she's super excited. It happened to like the way everything worked out and the appointment. You know, they go yeah. in and this month and. Does she do that with a recipient lined up? Or? Yeah, yes. She, so yeah. It's a friend of hers. Yeah, okay. somebody she's known since high school that has struggled for years with her, you know, with one kidney and been on dialysis. And I mean, you can't, you know, can you even imagine being under 40 and like being on dialysis every mm. week and all the stuff that goes with it? And Jeannie is familiar with that. Her mom was on it. So um, it's rough. N- it's rough. I mean, it's every day, is, right? Yeah, and this is a young yeah. woman with her whole life, and you know, hasn't been able to get a donor. And you know, Mitzi, it, when when she had read that, hey, we're I'm I'm looking to see if there's any matches out there. Mitzi's like, oh, at least I should try and just see, you know, what are the odds? But she's like, I'm at least gonna give it a try, and she ends up being a match, and mm. she still made this decision knowing that she's a match. She's like, I could be saving her life. I could be extending her life at the very least. So. She's doing that, and, and so, like, what a cool, cool time. I mean, for her to surgery to be, you know, during May, and it obviously, Garrett and um, Mitzi um, and Mitzi's husband, Driver, they have been our friends for over 20 years, and actually the last vacation Garrett and I took together was with Mitzi and Driver in August, so right before his mm. death. Um, one of our funnest memories, too. But, like, for her to get to do this ultimate act of kindness this month is its a big deal. Yeah. It's a really big deal. We're nervous as crap about it yeah, yeah. <laughs> as her friends. Yeah, I'm like, Mitz, yeah. I don't know. But I know. She's, but gonna, she's, a, she's super she's excited. Six, she's pumped. Yeah, she has peace with it. And uh, especially after, like, Garrett being an organ donor, like, we've talked about that a lot. Like, that's she, a choice. She's got another one. Yeah, that's what she says. <laughs> I got another one. Like, well, what if I need it? Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, now you only have one. No, I'm screwed. Thanks, friend. But, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Be good to your kidney. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. I will. Take care I'm of your kidney. I'm staring kid. at that Tito's bottle. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, one question I thought of today. Um, did Russ Martin have anything to do? He did. He did. Because I know he's big into the police. He was. And I, I never heard or, or anything, he, but I wanted to know if he... He raised a crap ton of money and donated it to my family to cool. me and the r.i.p russ martin yeah yeah, well, yeah james and i are big fans of his. yeah yeah so that was really it, it was incredible um and just he talked about it on the radio talked about the loss of garrett and who garrett was as a person and those things which he didn't need to do that he didn't know him from adam but yeah. the fact that he took that time and then to raise just a crazy amount of money that's why i mean like these strangers to me, I mean, we all know who he is or who, he, you know, we all knew who he was and we listened to him and Garrett was a big fan, listened to him yeah. all the time. But like for him to one day try and do something for us, like, so it's, it's mind boggling still to me to this day. So many people, like I said, the, yeah. you know, the Tunnel to Towers, just so much. It's. For those that don't know, Russ Martin Listener Foundation donates to fallen mm-hmm. police mm-hmm. officers, yes. just police officers. Just police I well, I don't Fire know if he's well, firefighters James, as well. James, you know? Yeah, it was firefighters as well. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, this just, there's people out there that wake up every day and just want to do something better in this world, and those are the people we have to focus on. Yeah. 
Yeah. Did um, you made an appearance in New York on uh, was it Fox and Friends? Yeah. For was for that tunnels? Tunnel, yeah, yeah. For tunnels with Frank. Um, Frank Stiller and um, we, I've gone to with several is, of is them. Is he the organiz- organizer? Yes. Yeah, it was his brother. Okay. That um, died in the 9/11 mm-hmm. was a firefighter and was super heroic and like that story I can't tell without getting choked up, but um, was a hero and his family uh, rallied around him and started this organization to first to give back to firefighters and then they just grew it. Now, not only do they do first responders, but they also build homes for gold star families and they're just, they're an incredible organization and they got hot Marky Mark as one of their spokesmen. So, I mean, like, they're <laughs> winning, clearly. Um, sorry, and, I had uh, to say that. Uh, <laughs> your, your boy, Con- Conor McGregor. Oh, he donated a million dollars. Yeah. yeah. I love listening to his I ad- love ad- him. Ad- I like to pretend one of my dogs has his voice. So, like, he curses all the time yeah. when I don't <laughs> give him his food in time. And he, like, talks like Conor. Is he me. Irish setter? Yeah. Is he? No, he's no. a boxer. <laughs> oh. He's just a real jackass i don't know if i'm allowed to say that on yeah, here he's like the worst dog ever like the worst dog and i love him the most out of any dog i've ever owned Tun- <laughs> so. tunnels to tower yeah <laughs> i don't know i don't know i can't i'll butcher james it. you got a good irish accent nah, i can't do it on the spot though uh, <laughs> you have to come up with it later yeah he he donated a million dollars with his whiskey and they, i mean he's a huge supporter of of heroes basically yeah. so yeah Gotta love him for that. I, I love who he is as a just his cocky, brazen he, yeah, attitude. He is. And he puts up, you know, he puts it all out there and he shows up. So yeah. it's pretty cool. But yeah, I got to be on the news. We got to go out for the races and um, races for the for the tunnel um, of towers. We went. Yeah, oh, okay. we went got, to New got, York together. Gotcha. And, that was um, uh, where they run up the. Yeah, well, I we, didn't realize that where they it, did the yeah, gotcha. yeah it was do the run. Super, it's okay. super so we did like. Cool. We did the path that he did with his gear on going to. And there's, I mean, there's firefighters out there with all that gear on. What that is it, 60 it. pounds, 65 yeah. pounds mm. or something like that? Then there's, you know, all these um, veterans with, well, yeah, the recruits. But, um, you know, they're, they're there in their wheelchairs and their amputees, and they're out there. And, I mean, we were out of breath within, like, 15 seconds. Mm-hmm. But, like, these guys are just hitting it hard. And it's it's a really, really neat event. And the, just the fact that nobody's forgotten. That's what's so amazing yeah. about it. That was the one, like my wish after Garrett died, once I finally got my head out of the clouds, I was like, I just don't want him to be forgotten. I don't want them to be like, what was that cop's name that was killed? Like, you know, a couple of years back. I don't, I, he had a name. He, he meant something to me and so many other people. I don't want him forgotten. The fact that like that organization doesn't forget they want their names remembered. That's that's freaking that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. But we had um we went out there with um some of our girlfriends came out with us and both Garrett's sisters came and we went all we crossed the finish line together in Garrett's honor and it was uh-huh. really it was really neat. We've gotten to do a lot. Now um now we have a race here in Fort Worth, Tunnels Towers that okay. does um here in Fort Worth, and it's actually Garrett's old lieutenant is uh, who heads that, and um, it's very personal for him. And they raise a ton of money and help people. So, right on. Yeah, it's really neat. Uh, what's the actual setup like? I know you said it's a course, but is it in a in the bu- in a building going up a building? No, or is you're it going ac- through no, the tunnel. Yeah, actual, you're going okay. through yeah. the tunnel. You're taking. The Sorry, I'm kind of ignorant, yeah. but no, 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 no. and it, it's really cool to watch. I have video and stuff. I'll show you later, but. Um, yeah, and you end at the memorial. So, it's and it's crazy because like everything like when you're doing the 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 run or going the path that he took or whatever, um, you know, it's loud and everything's going on and it's surreal. It's so emotional at the same time him. to think that like he did this. He put yeah. on his gear, he got he his car got stuck in that tunnel and he got his gear out of the trunk and he and ran took all off. that way and saved all those lives before the tower collapsed. I mean, he did not have to do that, but he did, you know, and, and didn't like, even think about it. Yeah. That, what is it? Three and a half miles or a little over? Oh, I can't remember. Yeah. But, but then that. when you get, when you finish and you get to the memorial, it's like peace. Yeah. Like everything's still, mm-hmm. everything's so quiet 
like yeah at the reflecting tower or the sorry yeah. the, the water yeah scene. the yeah. yeah and all and of the you just hear the water probably it's, yeah it's amazing and then you know while you're running when you come out of the tunnel they're all standing there like all these officers and military and stuff with the signs of of heroes that have fallen on 9-11 and they're holding these huge boards, and they're cheering you on, but you're, like, realizing who you're running for, who can't run today. They can't be here because of what they did. So get your rear in gear and cross that finish line. Don't quit. You know, right. and that's what they're basically telling you. And it, it's it's emotional, dude. It is. It's a, it's a cool thing. Yeah. And when we run in Fort Worth, we wear a badge on us. We wear a, a neck badge that um, has somebody on it that we're running with for. So pretty it's it's a that whole place way. is in like just eerie and awe-inspiring and mm-hmm. yeah a lot really a is. lot of different emotions in that yeah in, uh, just uh, yeah as soon as you hit it yeah yep what was his name uh the tunnel to towers uh that who they honor frank stiller or frank, steven stiller steven frank stiller. Is, is the oldest brother yeah steven and uh frank is alive yes frank okay. is his Steve, brother steven yeah, z steven. honoree yeah yeah that's he, okay. he's the I think I was aware of the tunnel to towers but didn't realize it, and I was aware of the race but or right not race but I didn't realize it was the same thing yeah yeah and they, when they do other events all over the country they do like um stair climbs and things like that um to raise money and and they've got some great people that donate to them and everything but what I mean they they pay off huge mortgages they yeah. all over and that's that's their thing, right? That's yeah. That's what they do. They yeah. they, they try to think of a way to, to take some load off. The those left that's behind. huge. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, like you said, just yeah. something like taking the, the garbage out, you know, is something you never were used to doing, and it sounds stupid, but um, that's just one little thing. Yeah. That now you're having to do extra that you weren't doing before. Yeah. And, and uh, you can find out uh, more info about that at t2t.org. There you go. Yeah. I got it brought up on my computer, too. Lisa had See, that's how, yeah. that's how kindred we are. Yeah. yeah. Even over the airwaves, even over the uh, the audio, FaceTime audio, I, we got this. I bet you're Miles not as apart. Ca- What's that? I bet you're not as casual as I am right now, though. <laughs> I don't know. Do you I mean, realize, do you realize so. we're, you're Texas away from us? I know. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Like the whole yeah, state. Is. I know. That I'm, is crazy. I'm like five miles from Mexico right now. Right. Uh, sidebar there. <laughs> um, so you went on Fox with... Uh, with Frank. With Frank. Uh-huh. And, uh, to to they, talk about Tunnel to Tower. He awarded me a, a check to pay off the mortgage and to talk about it. And talk a little bit about Garrett and where I was. Um, I actually was at Garrett's grave when I got a call from the same officer that his dear friend Anthony um who uh was the one that came to the door that night and he was like hey um I'm gonna put you through there's a phone call I want you to take um he's like it's from New York New York I'm in Texas like how do they even know right New York City but yeah the, exactly <laughs> but the crazy thing was is we were sitting there yeah we're at and, the grave and we're yeah, at that's wild. Garrett's yeah. grave and Sabrina's Sabrina, like, trying to process everything. And Jeannie, how am I going to do this? And I was scared to death, y'all. I was so scared. And then how do I go on without how- him? And then how do I do this? And then all of a sudden, here comes this New York accent. And it's The last Frank, thing you want to hear. I mean, and I'm like, why has Anthony put me on the phone? It, of course, you know, Anthony didn't know I'm sitting at the grave, like, boo-hooing my eyes out. but And, and just, like, miserable. But then this... And scared, scared How, how soon after was this? It was pretty soon. It was really quick. I think it was October. So within a month or so? Yeah, yeah. A lot of those first. Yeah, I mean, months. obviously with Jeannie and I both having such significant loss. They must have knew bills were probably months. due, so they probably, yeah. sounds he like they might have. and he was like, we are, um, we're doing this. We're wow. going to, and I was like, are you for real? Or like, is this really happening? And, and still in my mind, I'm like, why am I talking to some guy with such a heavy accent? <laughs> like, but he's such a good guy. Like, oh my gosh, once you get to know them, that whole organization. But I'll never forget, like, just sitting at his grave and being like, "You've got to help me get through this, Garrett. Like, I'm pissed that you're dead." 
because I don't know how to do this. And then to get this lifeline, you know, really this somebody saying, I'm going to at least take this off of you. You don't have to figure this one out on your own. Yeah. Because they had, to, I mean, like you, what, how long have y'all lived in the house? We had only lived in, we had bought that house in August. Wow. The, oh, year, wow. the August before. Okay. So we'd been, we just had one year in it. Either way, wow. And it was our dream home and, um. It was the house that I had begged Garrett for, and, you know, it, it was a big responsibility for Garrett to take on getting this house. It was a big jump up financially for us, and then an, an hour drive to, into work and for him. So, but it was such, it was also the happiest last few years of our marriage, too. You know, every marriage goes through their crap, you know, and you have, like, really good seasons and really sucky seasons, especially when you're married to a cop and you're raising kids and his life is chaotic like it is um so we were in one of those really good seasons those last few years um and that home was a big big part of it yeah yeah he felt peace there yeah like, for the first time like yeah he would come home from work and be like we could relax sabrina's not asking me for anything I else know, like, well, we, this, this is, is kind my, of enjoyable this is my yeah <laughs> we had a pool and yeah. um the neighborhood we were in the river was across the street so we could float the river and walk I, it's just he finally started like relaxing and start thinking about like he the future. It, he could the turn kids it off. weren't so you know the kids were settled, and he was proud of where they were at. And like we did this, like we didn't screw them up too bad. Like <laughs> we actually mm -hmm. pulled this one off. Like we were in shock ourselves. Our kids going to Oxford in England. Like you know, I'm a makeup artist, and he's Pinchy, a police officer. Yeah. Like how do we do that? <laughs> like how is she so smart? And then we got another one that's getting ready to graduate. You know, so it was just so it was good. We were in a good good place. And then when he was gone, I was like, how do I do this? And, and, and strangers, that's how I did it. Strangers and, and a really amazing family. I mean, Garrett's parents are probably saints. Like, I'm pretty sure there's a special place in heaven for how kind they are. Like, they get their own spot, VIPs or something. But they're amazing. And His I family's amazing. and All so of them. Sisters, are. the same. Yeah. So mm. I got really, really lucky really lucky I was surrounded by really good people and that's another reason to want to do something good and, it's an amazing you know, thing to be able to say right it is yeah it really is it, it is it breaks my heart when I hear other stories so yeah it's pretty cool um I've seen uh it's like some recognitions this maybe some s the state or uh mm -hmm. you've been awarded yeah. recognitions I would assume I didn't do a whole lot of research but uh on behalf of yeah, Garrett on behalf of Garrett we're talking about that yeah, I mean, obviously on um, that on his final night, September thirteenth of work, um, he was doing something pretty daggum heroic by stopping these and didn't hesitate for one minute when there's a guy with a gun shooting. So, you know, it, which is so hard for me to understand um, how first responders and military do that. Like, freaking first sign of a gun, I'm running the opposite way and trying to get away with it, get away from it, and they're running in. They're in the fight, you know, so that's always really cool. So he was recognized for that. Um, and then his team had several others um, prior to his death that were, that they had stopped bank robberies. Um, Garrett's old partner, who happens to be his best friend, was stabbed in, um, in a parking lot, breaking up a fight. And Garrett had to shoot the bad guy to get him to drop the knife. And mm -hmm. um, so he was recognized for that heroics. I mean, his best friend Chad will tell you, you know, he saved his life that night. That's what partners do. Cool. Um, made his family. So there was a whole bunch of different things that he was recognized. Your letter from? Oh, my letter from Trump. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the oh, president. Yeah? yeah, President Trump. Um, amazing. Very personal letter. Not a standard, here's what I send. Handwritten? Kind of handwritten, his signature. Like fully handwritten? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, no, the, the letter part of it is typed. Typed and um, said. But he, uh, not only did he mention both of our daughters' names, he talked about just what Garrett meant to the city and to this country. Um, he took time. He didn't have to. Like, yeah. uh, it was pretty, I have a lot of respect for that. Because, again, like, we, we're, we lose way too many officers all over this country every year. And um, that's, it, it weighed on him. And he shared that. He shared that, um, how much it hurt him. And that was pretty, he didn't have to do that. He could have just gone on being a president, you know, sure. like taking care of all sorts of other stuff. But he took the time. And, yeah, we, uh, 
It, it's kind of a, a like a a fog in some ways these last four, four years. I mean, all the stuff, and I'm glad you remind me because I mean I have that letter obviously yeah. up in my home next to a picture of Garrett and everything. I have a flag, um, not only the flag that was on Garrett's grave, but also flags um, from other people that that had carried them in the military in different battles, and then they gave them to me. Like they, one was draped over Garrett um, as we were taking him for the last time so that um, my last goodbye for his organs to be harvested, um, they had this flag on him that had seen all these battles, like intense battles. And they just hmm. kind of, it's kind of hard to even. Yeah. And just the way they honored him. Yeah. They honored him too as their role, in, you know, like. Taking him to that room. Taking him to the room to... To the OR. For him to save so many other people. They're all standing there, and, like, we all know, like, this is the final walk. Like, frick. Yeah. This is it. I'll never hold this hand again. And they they were there to catch me when those doors closed. So that's pretty significant. No doubt. It is. It's pretty significant. It is. It's like, I I remember it, but... um, at the same time, like, there was so much of it that it's hard. Like, I don't want to mess, mess up a detail or not say it right, but there was just so much. Hmm. So, I don't know if we talked about uh, his, uh, the guys he was working with that mm-hmm. night. Mm-hmm. Uh, I assume he was working with somebody. Oh, I feel like, and I'll, I'll, I guess I'll learn more as we go through the trial, but it seemed like the whole city of Fort Worth was at, at the scene There's, that night. Was there more of them there oh, that yeah. were yeah, involved, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. If you want to talk talk about them. I mean, there. well, I mean, Garrett's team is a small, very tight-knit team that he was on, um, and uh, they were very talented officers, like loads of years of experience between them, all of them, and they've all done – some pretty fantastic things, like things we've read about in the news and things like that, where you're like, man, these people are straight up heroes. Um, and then uh, I know like the special response team, the SRT team, which uh, two of the officers um, that they helped end the gunfight and they, um, they were there to put Garrett in a car and rush him to the hospital. They didn't wait, wait for ambulances. They put him in the back seat and, and, and tried to, I mean, when I say Garrett was a big man, like, he was a big dude, heavy. Took a lot of men to mm. get him in a car. And you can imagine the scene, and there's, you know, like, saving him or trying to uh, – the attempt to save to him, him while there's a gunfight still going and all that. You know, like, I don't know what that's like. That's something I watch in movies. But it was real life that night, and all of them, every single person on that t- – on, on all those teams – and all just the patrol officers that were there and all the people, they were making sure, because this was, this particular bar is actually in a neighborhood. So it's a street lined with people. Can we homes. ask what bar it was? Um, I, and Do you I, know? Yeah, no, I, yeah. Uh, it'll come out I'm here soon. Yeah. But um, it's, it's in, it's basically like it backs up to a street, a residential street. So... This shootout was on a residential street. People are home in their beds, you know, and there's the, this chaos. And they're protecting all these people who have no idea what's going on. And, and you know, that's that's a lot. And, and you've got an officer down. You have one of your own down. Like, how they did all that, I'll never know. And I, like I said, I'm sure I'll learn. I haven't heard all those things because, you know, nobody wants – me to have to relive that stuff. Yeah, or, I guess you don't Garrett. know the actual yeah, story, really, yeah, do you? And you, you probably won't until that comes out. You don't. Out. I know I, I kissed him goodbye that morning. I talked to him that mm-hmm. night at work. I knew what he was going to eat for dinner. I knew our conversation with our daughter, her happy birthday. And then it was, you know, I'll wake you up in the morning. I'll wake you when I get home, you know, kind of thing. And that was the end. So it, yeah. it I'm sure I will learn a lot here in the next month. You'll be attending. Oh yes, yeah. I will be at that trial for sure. Yeah. I, um, yeah, heck, one of the, I, after Garrett's death, I was like, you know, how did you go everywhere? Because I did, I did all of it. I felt like we needed it for the city. I felt like the police needed to see our family. Visibility. Like, yeah, I felt yeah. like the I, I felt like this the city needed to know like we we back you like you backed us. Like we're we'll be at all the events. We are you know. We're going to spread the love and, and not the hate. 
And so I did all that, and everybody would always be like, how do you do it? And I'm like, dude, do you know what they did? <laughs> like, I can yeah. do hard things. If they can do what they do, I can make it through this 30-minute event or whatever it was. Yeah. So we did a I lot. I thought you were going to say podcast. Oh, I can make it through this <laughs> podcast, I hope, maybe. I don't know. I'm a little nervous now. <laughs> I might be able to make it through this podcast. Yeah, we'll see. I'm a little fret. <laughs> but, yeah, so mm. I was just had to be a warrior. Yeah. I did, and that's that's what we – Say Garrett was, so, you know, and he was. Dude, he was. I never felt so safe in this. Yeah, that was the hardest. Hmm. It's like your safety's gone. But Wow. Yeah. We're at 55 minutes here. Um, have we have we skipped anything or missed anything or anything you want to bring up, speak to? No, I don't think. I mean, I feel like we've covered it. I really appreciate you even, like, letting us come on here and talk no, about thank the mission. You. And it's just Mission 3105. If, I hope people will just really try and be intentional and wake up every day and be like, what could I do to be kind? Whether it's to a stranger, somebody you know. I mean, call your mother. She probably wants to hear from you. Call your grandfather. Whatever it is. You know, those, yeah. those little things that were like, brothers, oh. your sisters. Yeah, those things that you're like, I don't feel like doing it. But you do it because it's going to, it could be the thing that changes the course for somebody else. Like, if you could just do Putting that. Putting positivity out into the universe. Yeah. And, I mean, like, you think, oh, man, like, what am I going to do today? What am I going to do the next day? But it'll come. It, and then, yeah, it, the and opportunity then, presents itself. And then when you do it, you're like, that feels so good. And that was the healing part. Yeah. That was the healing part. Giving, that? giving feels. Uh, yeah. Really yeah. What, and what you, it? And you don't cert- have to, like, necessarily give. Like I said, picking up someone's trash can is. Yeah. Like, Cause that's one of the things I get a it lot. It doesn't, all it does is take you five seconds. Yeah. It's an effort. Well, that's living life intentionally too and being intentional about doing good is, uh, is kind of some, you know, some uh, good karma to put out in the universe or something. Dude, 100%. It, that's one of the things that I really, um, there was times when obviously it's dark and I don't, I didn't want to go on because I was like, I didn't know how sure. to. Um, but something finally hit where I realized, like, I have to do all the things that Garrett doesn't get to do. I have to live a big, good, beautiful life. I've got to enjoy this because he can't anymore. I mean, and I, I, I'm a believer, so I think he's in heaven freaking celebrating mm-hmm. and having the best stuff. But um, but every day I'm like, I need to choose life. And I've been really lucky. I've, I've um, since remarried, and um, I have somebody who, like, loves freaking life. And so he's, uh, he helps with that, a big part of that living and reminding me, like, don't focus on the bad. Remember, you know, we're going to, we're going to do what Garrett can't do, which is live a big life. So yeah, being intentional. Well, we do a little portion of this show called five questions Oh God! (laughs) in which we pull five quote unquote random questions that I'm filtering here out of a jar. (laughs) I have an Um, alibi. (laughs) <laughs> the first question I have, and this is relevant to me, uh, when is the last time you found money or a coin on the ground? Oh, Matthew, that's all you. Like, I, I know. I you just, probably did it today, like two seconds before we got here. I have here. a good story. Y'all, y'all answer first. Oh, gosh. I, I, don't, I haven't found any lately, I don't think. I don't know. I, I, it comes to mind, Josie just found some. I have an eight-year-old stepdaughter now. She's Kay. like the... God, she's the light of my world now. Who knew? I have two grown, and now I get to start all over again. And um, she just found one. She was so excited about it. Of course, she, she couldn't remember if it was a nickel or a quarter. Those two screw her up every yeah. time. <laughs> every time. That five. You know. That nickel, five. nickel and quarter? Yeah, yeah. they look yeah. the same to a, a sev- you know, second worth, grader. One's not worth much, and one's worth yeah. way more. So. It's the five that gets her. <laughs> yeah, it is. They're both fives. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, question number two. Sorry, James. Um, what's your favorite phone app? Is James answering that one, or I'm just saying sorry because he's not part of this. Oh, really he doesn't reading. get to do it. He now. usually pulls these out. Oh, James, okay. have you found any change on the ground? Pesos. Uh, yeah, no, I haven't found any pesos. Oddly enough, I did find a Canadian uh, penny the other day. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Oh, I didn't tell my story. <laughs> yeah. Man, uh, James, did you see my picture I posted? I did. Oh, my God. I, I love finding money. Floor money <laughs> is my hashtag. I love finding change wherever it is. Penny, I pick up a penny out of a toilet almost. I haven't done that. But anyway, I, I was walking I from here. 
<laughs> I was yeah. I was walking from here across the street to drop a letter at the post office, and on my way, I looked down. There's a shiny quarter there. I was like, oh, hot diggity, man, freaking quarter. So I was gonna. I was got really excited to text my buddy, who I always tell when I pick up money. And uh, I didn't do it yet. I dropped my letter off. I'm headed back uh, back here. I get to the road. I see another quarter in the middle of the road. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> so I go pick it up. And then an- that one leads me to another, which led me to another, which led me to $6.25 in quarters that I picked up off the square Are road you out here. Just one walk to a mailbox? Yeah. Yeah. We're hanging out. It blew my mind. A okay, guys. So, so. It, wasn't, it wasn't paper money, but it was six twenty five, and I call that a win. So are a some win. of our friends keeping Matthew entertained while he's at work down here, guys? <laughs> I dropped right. Well, it's the that's what hunt. somebody said. I, I would have thought somebody's like, trying to shoot me or, like, stalk me or something, you know? like Snipers up there. Watch, I, I, I told him get him with this. That's why I won't last long in an apocalypse. <laughs> that was that was my gift to you. I set that up. I was being intentional about giving you some gold. Yeah. That's just Mission 3105, Matthew. Like, but I did look like a crazy person for about five minutes. Yeah, they're walk, like, what walking you, around the square. What are you like doing? Grown up Easter egg looking on the ground. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Favorite phone app? Did we talk about that? Um. Yeah. I don't know. I think my favorite. What do you use the most? Text. <laughs> yeah, text messaging. Texting. Yeah. Obviously. I use Pinterest Shazam. a lot. I was gonna say Pinterest might be my next go-to. Mm-hmm. Shazam. I do. I don't know Shazam. Did, oh, I thought you said Shazam. No, James did. did I did. Yeah. Oh, that, just, the first app I ever downloaded uh, uh, when I got an iPhone, like in 2007 or yeah. whatever. I think and, the first. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say it's uh, it's what I still use it like consistently. Yep. You know. You're gonna Ag- have to, agreed. You're gonna have to tell Sabrina what it is. Yeah, I don't know. I've never. Heard Shazam's of it. great. Uh, yeah, you just hold the uh, you, you open Shazam and hold it up. If there's a song playing that you don't okay. know or thought of in a long time, it'll tell you what it is and who sings it. It's one of those apps, like a lot of, uh, there, there used to be an app called Knocking, which is basically FaceTime, but Knocking right. did FaceTime before, and a lot of those old apps got phased out because iPhone was like, well, I'll just put a calculator on the, on the phone, you know? Mm-hmm. So, like, Shazam never got phased out. It's still relevant. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Me and Adam use it. It's a way to use, like, a Shazam-like feature, but it's just, it's still, it's still a better app. Yeah, and then it's it all... links you to buy the, per- buy the uh, songs, too, yeah. which is perfect. Guess and give you lyrics. Guess, yeah, guess yeah, that's a, that's a good one that's too. That's cool. Update. Okay. I guess I the know. first app I ever got was Carling the Beer. It was yeah. and this is 2008. It was a Carling app, and all it did was filled your phone up with a beer, like it lo- made it look like your phone was a beer, <laughs> and then you could look make it look like you were drinking it. <gasps> I remember that. It was because the iPhone was big. I mean, it was yeah groundbreaking, and that was one of those weird things you could do with it. That's or like the sound grenade. That's yeah, the sound grenade. I think I still have that one. Do y'all have that? No, Garrett, yeah. is that the one that had the fart sounds? Because Garrett had that one with the different names, the different fart sounds. It was no. Like the Ripper. I've got the fart the app. Silent, don't get me wrong. The deadly. Yeah. I call that. He would constantly do that crap. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that was number two. Yeah, I was just saying. <laughs> number two. Man, that was perfectly written. Um, the sound grenade is a high pitched noise that'll go off you just set it to go off on your phone and only young people can hear it some james we're probably too old to hear it anymore Uh, i seriously think i am because i hear that high pitched noise all the time now anyway uh that's enough phone app talk i guess (laughs) uh that was two questions right last thing you bought on amazon well i am a decorator so i shop for clients so the last thing i bought was for a client this, I don't know, if, was it a cowhide rug or a fake plant? I can't remember, but it was something, <laughs> like, okay. not cool. <laughs> but cool. I mean, cool for them. Perf- but, yeah. Perfect answer. <laughs> Let's see here. I'm, I'm actually having to look because it's been a minute. I'm right there with you. <laughs> oh, so uh, April 14th, I bought, <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> I bought a shirt. I bought a shirt that shows a guy punching, and every time he throws a punch, it says, per my last email <laughs> <laughs> that's good yeah so that's the last thing i bought and that was on april 14th i was gonna say the last thing i bought was on february 14th and it was a rug a rug huh? a rug for my bed i don't amazon much and i bought a blackstone a couple of years ago or last year i think on amazon yeah that's where you bought that well rug? i've got an amazon uh, uh associates account where you can get paid on stuff that people buy. So I created a link for myself to buy a Blackstone. (laughs) 
and then I bought it, and I think I got paid on the back end for promoting it to myself. Like nine cents or something? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I got, I got like nine cents in my account for an approved buy. You got buy. more floor money the other day than you got paid. I know, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I figure on uh, yearly, I pick up about seven fifty. Okay. Just in randoms, but that was six fifty or six twenty five. Oh, day. so you're already ahead. Yeah. I average out. I I mean I think I get just by my estimation seven fifty a year by just I picking up you money. Get, you see the text I just sent you? Got a picture of my shirt. I'm very proud of it. Take a look at it. Uh the next question is and I'm I'm taking a look at it right now. Uh the next question is when was the last when was the last time you were on stage? Oh crap. Um probably recent. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. That's cute. That's, I like your hair. <laughs> um, I don't know. When yeah, was last time? I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't know when that would be. I think what it might have the been question? the tunnel to Towers race in Fort Worth. Did I go up there? No, I didn't go up there. Um, I don't remember. Shoot, last time you were La- on stage. Yeah. Oh, when I came into town last uh, time to see the family i went to church and they asked me to get up and speak about the the border mission down there so i guess that counts that totally counts it's the pulpit we'll yeah call it a stage. Stage. <laughs> i didn't say the pulpit james <laughs> <laughs> no that works i like it i don't even know uh i know i was on stage at the picnic last year oh there you go are you gonna be on stage this year yeah we're doing a car show jeep show nice. vehicle nice. show auto show so, yep. Uh, last question. What are some nicknames people have given you? Really? If any. <laughs> I could come up with a whole bunch of I'm glad you think it's funny, there. James. Ha, ha, ha. I didn't you know there was a backstory. First. No, I'm just thinking it's just funny. Uh, well, really, because my nickname that you gave me. That, weenie, weenie? Yeah. Weenie, oh, I didn't weenie. call you Jeannie Weenie. I yep. meant to on the intro. Yeah. I forgot. I've called her Squeaky. Yeah, Sabrina's years. called me Squeaky. Lance would call you the Ween. The Ween. <laughs> yeah. Bad Chad calls you Mean Jean. Yeah, Bad mean Chad, Jean. Garrett's best friend. He calls me Mean Jean. Now his kids call me. Yeah. Mean Jean. Mean Jean, really, it does. It works. Nice. <laughs> it works good. <laughs> Jeannie's the creator, and this is a good nickname story of a. <laughs> you probably know. You might tell me if you don't, I'd be surprised. A Duty Pooty. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> oh no! I, but I want to know now. Our, Garrett Garrett knows what duty booty is. Um, Dr Pepper. Oh God! We even call Diet Cokes duty cooties. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, I say duty booty a lot, and like I worked at a bar for a long time, and people thought it was crazy. It's so funny. Duty booty. Duty booty. <laughs> so it's no. fun. It's fun to say too. <laughs> duty booty. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, uh, that was five questions. Um, once again, mission thirty one oh five. Every day in May, do do a good deed, put some positivity out there, do something nice for somebody, say something nice. Yeah, and let us know about it. Yes. Yeah, go like the page. Tag the Facebook page. Yeah, go like Hit the that page. Little at sign. Yep. yep. Tag mission thirty one oh five. Do a hashtag as well. Hashtag. You could probably see it that way. Filter yeah. them out. Because you can go on there and look up the hashtag and find them that way. And if anybody has any issues, like, they can send it and, like, write something. Send it in Messenger. Get it to me. I was going to say, I've, I've got a Jeep page. And I always like it when people message me mm-hmm. uh, things specifically. Like, then, they like the product or, you, hey, I did this for so-and-so. Here's my story in detail. And then you can share it. Yeah, yeah. I you do. Can, I yeah. get a lot of those, and I, I enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, cool. we can get them. You can get them out there. Yeah, dude. James, I'll give you the last word there. Ah, man. Um, I'm, I'm good. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sabrina, Gene, Gene was not seen again. Sabrina, I would like to meet you uh, face-to-face one time, uh, but I appreciate you uh, doing what you're doing. I think it's a much-needed much needed thing and uh you know people talk about kindness a lot but we don't we don't really do it intentionally and i think uh what you're doing is great thank you awesome. cool deal well thank you ladies for coming in Thanks um for having best us. of luck with the uh with your organization and uh we hope everybody gets out there and shares it yeah thanks cool thank y'all bye thanks. james see you later bye. thank bye. you for what you do mm-hmm. yes ma'am i appreciate it take her easy jmo